Good morning to all. Present good morning to all and welcome to our morning service from the St. Andrew's Zoom platform. We hope this act of worship brings peace and comfort to all our hearts as we gather together today. Let us pray. As we lift the name of Jesus high above all, we serve a risen Savior. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity once again to be in your presence, to praise, worship, and adore you. Guide us by your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Cover us with your precious blood. And we thank you again, Lord Father, for bringing us, for waking us up this morning to see a new day. So we ask you, Lord, to guide us with your Holy Spirit again to this service in no other name, but in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God sent his They called him Jesus He came to love He and forgive He lived and died To buy my pardon An empty grave there to prove My Savior lives Because he lives I can face tomorrow Because he lives All fear Thank you. 
service continue on page 34 and following. Our service continues on page 34 and following. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord, our God. By whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his son, Jesus Christ. By whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the spirit of God. In whom is our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power through your spirit. May we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Sorry, Sorry about that there. I don't know what is happening this morning. Right. Sorry about that. So we're doing the um, confession first, right? Christ, Christ, Christ was raised from the dead. Right. No more. No more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ, all shall be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray for the forgiveness of our sins. In a moment of silence, we bring our sin before God. You know, it's because it's sin in thought, word and deed, and bring ourselves before God. As we say, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. One, two. I'd rather have Jesus silver gold I'd rather be his than have riches untold. 
I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hands than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. I'd rather Sam. Psalm 26, Book of Common Prayer, page 498. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. 
I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with those who thirst for blood, whose hands are full of evil plots and their right hand full of bribes. As for me, I will live with integrity. Redeem me, O Lord, and have pity on me. My foot stands on level ground. In the full assembly, I will bless the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. First reading. It's, um, it, 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 it doesn't start from the top there. So they'll have to read it from my book. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Read it from your book. I'm seeing I'm getting some internet issues this morning. On the third day. The first reading is taken from Exodus chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. At the third new moon, after the Israelites had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day, they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. When Moses went up to God, the Lord called him, called to him from the mountain saying, thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and I brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me, for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and said before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud. In order that the people may hear when I speak with you and so trust you ever after. When Moses had told the words of the people to the Lord, the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and prepare for the third day. Because on the third day, the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. You shall set limits for the people all around, saying, be careful not to go up, to, up the mountain or to touch the edge of it. And who, any who touch, it, touch the mountain shall be put to death. No hand shall touch that but they shall be stoned or shot with arrows. 
but an animal or human being. They shall not live. When the trumpet sounds a long blast, they may go up on the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people. He consecrated the people and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, prepare for the third day. Do not go near a woman. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning, as well as a thick cloud on the mountain and the blast of a trumpet so loud that all the people who were in the camp trembled. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Benedictus. <laughs> Because say the Benedictus, or what did he? Yeah, let's. I don't know what's happening. Now have the Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David, through your holy prophets. You promised of all to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to redeem and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you child shall be called the prophet of the most high for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the word of God written in the book of Matthew chapter three, beginning at verse seven. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, beat their fruit worthy of repentance do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. 
he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear the, his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. to God. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him. With him all the way. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Today's reading, Matthew chapter 3, verses 7 through 12. I baptize you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I. He himself will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Let us pray. Loving God and Father, bless this message. Charge it with your power. Grant your servant clarity of thought and precision of expression to proclaim your word with conviction to your people, receptive hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. More than 2000 years ago, John the Baptist, the baptizer was on a mission. His role was to prepare the people for the coming of Jesus Christ. God had promised that he would send the Messiah to Israel. 400 years had passed since the last prophet had visited. Now John the Baptist appears on the scene. His message to the people was clear. Repent and be baptized. The kingdom of God is at hand. As we examine this story that tells us how God prepared his people for the coming of Jesus, we can look at ourselves and ask, how are we preparing for him to be part of our lives so that we could make him guide and direct our life? This now becomes, a, becomes personal because he's no longer coming as in the days of John the Baptist. He's here. We just celebrated his crucifixion, death, and resurrection. So John's first words to the people was, repent. He was calling on people to repent. We are all sinners. Repentance is a necessary step to prepare the way for Jesus to come into our life. The word repent means to completely change our direction. It basically means coming to the place in our life where we can say, what I am doing is not right. I want to go God's way. I want to follow his example. For when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us still. If we only will trust and obey. When we repent, 
We remove the obstacles that stand in the way of Jesus. In the way of Jesus taking greater control of our life. We humble ourselves before him so that he may come and move freely in our life. How do we do that? Let's say I like to gossip. I'm always quick to judge. I know what everyone else is doing that is wrong. This is not God's way. Today, I will change all that. I will begin to show love as Jesus did. I know that this is easier said than done. But with God's help, all things are possible. John goes on to say, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. He tells them to produce fruit consistent with repentance. Well, what does that mean? It means to demonstrate the true change in your heart and mind by the way that we live our lives. If God has truly changed our life, then let it shine. Let it show by the way we live. So when John says produce fruit in keeping with repentance, what he's asking is for faithful adherence to God's word. If we do not accept God's word, we will never accept Jesus because it is God's word that testifies to Jesus. It is not enough just to go through the motions. We do it every Sunday. We recite, let us pray to God for the forgiveness of our sins. Is that meaningless bubble? Let me ask that question again. Is that meaningless bubble? We cannot fool God. God sees and knows all things. Genuine heart change before God results in genuine life change before others. We cannot have true repentance without a changed life. A new life that is completely oriented in and around Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. The reading continues. Don't presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. The Jews thought they were automatically good with God because they were descended from Abraham. Many people today think they're good with God just because they go to church or because their parents are, Christ are Christians or because they were raised in the church. Mommy is a Sunday school teacher or daddy is the priest. What does John say? Every tub has to sit on its own bottom. God can make chosen people out of these rocks if he wants to. So John is telling the people, you cannot inherit the right to forgiveness. God does not show favoritism. He has no preferred people. The vagrant on the street has just as much opportunity for salvation as the prime minister. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who your parents are and were. It does not matter where you came from. If you want to come to God, you must come to Jesus Christ. There's no other way. You cannot buy your way. You cannot charm your way. In Matthew 3.10, it reads, the ax is already at the root of the trees and every tree that does not produce good food will be cut down and thrown into the fire. John tried to impress upon the people the urgency of the matter. This cannot wait for tomorrow. This cannot wait for tomorrow. We must act now. Repent of our sins and let Jesus be our guide. So John the Baptist proclaimed it. Jesus proclaimed it. 
and today we proclaim it. The kingdom of God is at hand. Be ready. What is this kingdom? Some think of it as a place where God sits on a throne and his followers gather around. Well, our teachings say it is not so. I recall this hymn which helps my imagination. Thy kingdom come, O Lord, the rule of Christ begin. Break with an iron rod the tyrannies of sin. It is a rule. God's kingdom is wherever the reign and rule of God breaks into the hearts of his people. It brings about a change of heart, which leads to a change of mind and spills out into a change of the way that we live our lives. That's where the kingdom of God is. It is here this morning in this gathering and it is around the world, anywhere God's people are gathered to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and as people repent and submit to Jesus. Secondly, John tells the people they must be baptized. The baptism done by John was not ritualistic as was done by religious leaders of those days who placed great importance on ritual purity. Baptism for them was physical cleansing. John's baptism was a symbol of repentance, of turning away from sin. The people who came to John to be baptized wanted to be ready when the Messiah came. The text continues. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals are not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The baptizing with the Holy Spirit took place on the day of Pentecost. But Jesus continues to baptize with the Spirit every time someone comes to him. Christian baptism is different than John's baptism. John's baptism was a baptism of repentance in preparation for Jesus. Now that Jesus has come, Jesus is the true baptizer. Every person who believes in him, Jesus baptizes into the body of Christ through the Holy Spirit. Preparing for the Lord is a perpetual task. Our entire life is centered on one purpose, getting ready for an everlasting life with Christ. Are you seriously preparing for that life? Repentance is not a one-time action, but must take place daily. Neither our world nor our lives are suitable for the presence of God. We face a Herculean task to make them suitable. Such a task can only be accomplished to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We have all strayed and fallen short, but as we seek God's forgiveness, acknowledging our sinfulness, can we with confidence pray, as our Psalm 26 in verse two puts it, Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and mind. Will you and I be able to say when the time comes, as verse 3 says, Lord, your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. My brothers and sisters, the choice is a personal one. Are you going to repent and turn to the Lord and let his Holy Spirit work in us and through us? Will you answer like the elders of the people in Exodus chapter 19, verse 7, when Moses summoned before them the words that the Lord commanded? The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Will we have confidence to answer in such words? May God's Holy Spirit continue to call on us and empower us to do these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
The Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also and with you. And also with Let you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. From the page 43. Lord, reveal your love among us. That we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations. And teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness. And her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O oh Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed. That your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us. That in us and through us your will may be done. You have to collect for the third Sunday of Easter. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in your safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer for the diocese, from page 79, number 13. O oh God, by your grace, you have called us in this diocese to a goodly fellowship of faith. Bless our Bishop Claude and retired bishops, Clive, Roll, and Calvin, and other clergy, and all our people. Grant that your word may be truly preached and truly heard, your sacraments faithfully administered and faithfully received. By your spirit, fashion our lives according to the example of your son and grant that we, and grant that we may show the power of your people to all among those who we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. In the, the, the diocesan daily cycle of prayer, today we pray for the parish of Christ Church Cascade, Port of Spain. We pray for the Reverend Canon Dr. Nolly Clark, Dean Emeritus, and for the Reverend Patricia Bernard. We pray for the Bishop Anstey Jr. School, 
and for the St. Anne Hospital and for the development of the Christian education. May God continue to guide them as they serve in these various ministries. We pray for the sick, number 20, from page 203. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, Don Berkeley, Felix Morris, Cheryl Paul, Lucita Thomas, Leopold Walters, Barbara Camps, and Lynette Wilson, Reverend Mark, Samuel, Deacon Stephen Rowan, and all others who require our prayers. Give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in your loving care, and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Pray for the departed. Page 198, number eight. Almighty God, we remember before you today your faithful servant, Amona Berkeley, Reverend Father Lewis Belgrave, and pray that having opened to them the gates of larger life, you will receive them more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have faithfully served you in the past, they may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Continue with our intercession. Prayer for strength, and we found on page 76 of the Book of Common Prayer. May the strength of God pilot us. May the power of God preserve us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the shield of God defend us. May the host of God guard us against the snares of evil and the temptations of the world. May Christ be with us, Christ before us, Christ in us, Christ over us. May your salvation, O Lord, be always ours, this day and forevermore. Amen. Prayer number seven, prayer attributed to St. Francis, page 77 of the Book of Common Prayer. Merciful God, to you we commend ourselves and all those who need your help and correction. Where there is hatred, give love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is sadness, joy. Where there is darkness, light. Grant that we may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving we receive, in pardoning we are pardoned, and it is in dying we are born into eternal life. Amen. Prayer number 11, page 78. Prayer for peace among the nations. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, 
Jesus Christ. Amen. A special prayer for the people of Ukraine. Lord, bring peace to that nation. Give the people comfort and let them live a life of freedom as everyone else. Remember them, O oh Lord. Amen. A prayer for the parish, number 14, found on page 79. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us to be of one heart, and the mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer for the unemployed. Number 20, found on page 81 in the Book of Common Prayer. Heavenly Father, remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of work. Guide the people of this land so to use our public and private wealth that all may find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive a just payment for their labor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer number 28 for young people, found on page 83 in the Book of Common Prayer. God, our Father, we pray for our young people growing up in an unstable and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more meaning to life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure, not as a measure of their will, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now have a prayer of dedication from, from page 47. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Greetings to those persons who celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, and special occasions. God of all creation, we offer you grateful thanks and praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of your servants who recalls today the day of their birth and rejoices in your gifts of life and love with families and friends. Uphold them with your presence and surround them with your love that they may enjoy many years in good health, peace, joy, and happiness, and may all of them be pleasing to you always. We ask special blessings on those who celebrated their priesthood recently, um, Reverend Claire and others, and we wish that you continue you know, in the service. We ask this to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
A warm, <coughs> a warm St. Andrews welcome to all and a special welcome to persons who are sharing with us for the first time. The parish office is open Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. You may call the parish office at 679-2157 or call or WhatsApp the cell number at 492-5835 or any member of clergy for information or service required. Reverend Eric Thompson at 683-9676. Deacon Winston Roberts at 484-8352 for any further information. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask, and maintain social distances. The COVID-19 virus has not left us. Be safe and be healthy. Banking information. All persons wishing to make donations and or offerings can do so via direct deposit to Royal Bank of Canada, Coover. The account is in the, name, in the name of the different churches in the parish will no longer be used. All checks need to be made into the account below. The incorporated trustee of the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, St. Andrew Parish, Kufa. The parish account number is 1000800. Five four two five two seven. St. Philip Anglican Church will be having a sweet box sale on Saturday, 20th of May, 2022, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Kindly contact Mrs. Shelley and Pierre at 483-7536 for more information and to purchase tickets. Confirmation class will have a service at the St. Andrew Anglican Church on Saturday, 7th May, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. This is a special note. <laughs> Anglican shop is located upstairs, the Cooper, Coover Shopping Complex. The hours are Tuesdays 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., Wednesdays 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., and Fridays 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Please go out and lend your support in this venture. Bible study with Brother Ike continues via Zoom on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. The meeting ID is 891-995-5172. The password is Bible in all capital letters. Virtual services are held on Tuesdays at 7 a.m. and Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. Please note that the next service will be on Thursday, 5th of May, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Reverend Thompson and the vestry has introduced a unique method of fundraising. This method is to assist in funding projects within the parish. 
the three parish churches will implement this new initiative on June 12, 2022. First one is Blue Sunday, June 12, 2022. Members will be given a blue envelope prior to the date and will be asked to put more than $100, that's a blue note, in it. You can collect more than one envelope and give to other parishioners or your neighbors. Those envelopes will be collected on the date, June 12th, 2022. Bronx Sunday. Bronx Sunday is to be held on December 4, 2022. A Bronx envelope will be issued prior to the date and in it, you will place a $50 note or denominations amounting to $50 or even more. Thanks for your support. We now have the final hymn, Amazing Grace. Just before the 
closing prayer. Let me say thanks to for you, all those who have tuned in to us this service this morning. Thanks to all the readers. Thanks to all those who have contributed. Thanks to the to Mr. Williams, everyone who have contributed. Although Kandi and K and they are not here, but the guidance is always respected and loved. We say thanks to them as well. And thanks to Lee Minister Leash for conducting the service. Thank you very much. Thanks one and all. May God continue to bless you. Now to him who is able to do immeasurable more that, than we can ask or conceive by the power which is at work among us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The visit and they do have a blessed day and enjoy the rest of your week. In Jesus' name. Have a blessed day all and um, be safe if you're going out to work. Drive safely. Well, not alone on the roads today. Morning, Reverend Lynch. If you are listening, at the issue of speedy recovery. I hear you have done when you call. Good morning. Yes. Did you today? I say, oh, okay. blessed morning to the worship team. Oh, okay. Thank you kindly for the message. Deacon, well done. Thank you. Sure. Joan, all the readers, well, truly right. appreciated the experience. We are much better. Well, I had well, a sore right. throat and runny nose over the weekend, so I stayed away from the service. Okay. We okay. are much better. We glorify God for the opportunity to share and worship this morning. 
and we praise Absolutely. blessings upon all, all those who are present. Uh, you heard all the voices. Carl, continue the good work. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Roberts, Joan, readers, yes, Deline, Ray, and all, all those who are part of Deline, Denny, yes. and all yes. those who are part of the team. Do stay strong in the Lord. Do stay strong in the yes. Lord. May God continue to give us that guidance of the Holy Spirit in all that we do. You have a wonderful day and continue to know his presence and be guided by his spirit. Amen. No healing and wholeness to you. Thank you kindly, John. Amen.